Good morning. It's great to see a nice church full of people here this morning. Say, Bush, I think you can turn down the thermostat a little bit. I feel uh, there's people waving at me, and I, they're not waving at me, they're just fanning their bulletins, so I think it's warm enough in here. Uh, just like to thank Sherry Marquardt and Nate Amborn and Sam Meitzel um, as they've come in and installed our new equipment tonight. There's cameras. Sherry, are you going to be running these cameras today? Um, there's a camera behind me, and when they view me from behind, it's not that I have a halo on, it's my bald spot. <laughs> so it's going to take a while for me to get used to that, too. Uh, we're also looking for people to serve on our technology team. So if there's anyone, young and old alike, uh, that would be interested in help uh, run our technology here that we've installed in the church, uh, please see Sherry Marquardt or Nate Amborn. Uh, we'd like to get a few people, maybe a half a dozen, maybe a dozen, of people to, to learn how to run that so that they can help us with our services. We begin our worship service this morning by singing our opening hymn, Hymn number 850. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
of ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great is the Lord and most great. I will extol the Lord. My soul will be Glorify the Lord with me. I sought the Lord and he answered me. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Great is the Lord, and most worthy of praise. In the city of our God, His holy mountain. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. You may be seated for our hymn of praise from all that dwell below the skies.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. In this, we are talking about the Lord preparing us a feast. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations, he will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him, and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in the gradual, which comes from Psalm 34, verse 9. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Our epistle reading this morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. In this reading this morning, it is telling us to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise as we sing our Alleluia in verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Jesus shares a parable this morning with regards to the wedding banquet that awaits us in heaven. Jesus spoke to them again in a parable saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invite to go So the servants went out into the streets and gathered up. See the gap. He noticed the man that friend he asked, How did you get in here without the man was speechless? For many are invited, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. We join together in the confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with that bell, it means it's time for the children's message. Somebody's bell went off. I heard it. <laughs> All right. We're going to do something different this week. There's a few kids out there. If they would like to come up for the children's message, you're welcome to do so. We've got a lot of space up here, so just spread out, and I'll talk to you from up here. If you'd like to come up, you can come up. If not, I'll talk to you where you're at. So, Everybody kind of not sure you can wear your masks if you come up. Because it's going to be kind of hard to see this thing if you don't come up here. So. All right, so I have a question for all of you, first of all. I know I heard that the uh, kids are going to be returning back to hybrid on Tuesday here at Martin County West. How many of you are happy for that? I'm pretty sure everybody will be happy. It's returning again to a little bit uh, more sense of normalcy for these kids. So a question for you today is, how many have ever been invited to a birthday party? Raise your hand. I'm sure everybody at one point has been invited to a birthday party, correct? And then a lot of times you get very creative with it. Years ago, of course, they made the paper versions of the, of the invitations. Nowadays, they're doing social media ones, they're doing the digital ones, they're doing printed ones, themed ones. Walt Disney, I know, is a, or Disney is a popular one. Um, there's also some with the, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other examples. We have some that I've done when I was at the photo press that was the, uh, Megatron, we've done various ones, John Deere themes, international themes, all those different kinds of things. What we're talking about today and what Pastor just got done reading about was the wedding feast or the wedding banquet. And the invitations were sent out during that banquet itself. It was sent out to everybody that was uh, invited for the wedding. And a lot of times I went back and looked and I found, of course, ours for Karis and mine. That was back in 2002. But I also found my parents' wedding invitation. This goes back to 1964, a few years before a lot of you kids. But it's one that they had sent out inviting people to come to their wedding. It was pretty fancy, this type of a thing. And what you had to do for that was you had to do what they call RSVP, or return back saying, yes, I'm coming to the wedding how many of us are coming, two, or if you had kids, maybe three or four, they would let the people know that we're having the wedding, how many was coming to the wedding. Well, what's happened is God has sent us an invitation too. He sends us an invitation to spend our rest of our lives with him in heaven once we are, have left earth. And that invitation is sent to us through means of the Bible. When Jesus came down from heaven to become a man, and he died on the cross for us, it's written in the Bible, because the Bible is God's word. And that's our invitation for us to spend our eternal life with him in heaven. So we get an invitation, it may not be paper, actually it's paper in this version, or you can read it digitally too, but it's an invitation that's sent to all of us as Christians that we can spend our entire lives with him in heaven. So remember that the next time that you have an invitation to a birthday party or to a wedding, uh, anything like that, or a party period, it's the same thing that God does for us every single week when you're here in church, when you go to Sunday school, you read about Jesus, you read about the different things that happen in the Bible, which is God's word. Please join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. 
We thank you for this beautiful day. We also thank you for our bountiful harvest. Protect those who are still taking in the remainder of the harvest and the tillage. We thank you for your invitation. Through your word, the Bible. Let us RSVP our plans to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now with our next hymn. Congregation, please rise. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace are with us this day. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. He sent his servants out not once, not twice, but three times with the invitation to different people to come to the wedding banquet. Come to the wedding banquet. He said it's ready. But those who he had invited and intended to invite did not deserve to come. So he said, go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the But when the king came to see his guest, he noticed that there was a man not wearing wedding clothes. And as I was reading the gospel reading today, I thought, we're missing a verse here. We're missing verse 13. Friend, he asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. And then the king told his servants, take that man and throw him out into the darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then in verse 14 he says, for many are invited but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the wedding banquet. You may be seated. As we gather here today in the Lord's house, how many of you remember what you were doing on July 29th, 1981? How many of you weren't even born then? Raise your hands. I want to see how young a congregation we have. You're kidding me, Meitzel. You weren't born yet in 81? You know, people were taking off from work. It was July 29th, 1981. What big event was happening in the world? What was capturing the world's attention on that day? It happened to be on a Thursday. 
People took off from work. People that I went to college with, they missed classes so that they could tune in and watch this event. What am I talking about? The royal wedding between Prince Charles and Diana. You don't remember that. Maybe some of you remember 2011, April 29th. That's when Charles and Diana's son, William and Kate Middleton, got married. It just seems like the world pauses. And then on May 19th, we have Prince Harry and Markle Meghan getting married. You know, as we, we gather here, we think of that big event and how it just captured everyone's attention. And you think of all the people that were involved in special people, special family members that were invited. And then we were also invited because we watched it on, on television unfolding. You know, I've had a chance to go to many weddings in my lifetime. <laughs> I've been an invited guest. I've officiated at many of these weddings. And they get bigger and bigger. Our chancel is too small up here, folks. How many of you were on the planning committee back in 1948 when they talked about building this building? They weren't thinking about weddings that had nine attendants. Flowers and readers and soloists and all I thank God at times that these weddings are held outside because there's no way we can hold them within the walls of our church. As we gather here today, weddings are very special. And as Jeff was talking about the responding to the invitation, now they send out save the date, you know, six months before the event even takes place. The invitations that go out. And that's the most difficult thing for a couple that is getting married is to sit down with their parents and plan the invitation list. Who are we going to invite? Where do we stop the invitations? What about the reception? How much is that going to set us back? <laughs> about the DJ or the band and the food and the and the place that we're going to have it at. As we gather here, there's a lot of stress that goes in planning for a wedding. In our parable today, Jesus talks about a wedding banquet. Isaiah talks about a wedding banquet in the Old Testament reading today. The Lord will set a table, the best of meats and the finest of wines. And those who are invited to this wedding banquet this is a banquet of all wedding banquets because it is the last of all wedding banquets and it doesn't end after the night is over. Or in Jesus' day, you remember the first miracle that Jesus performed? Happened to be at a wedding banquet, wasn't it? Turning water into wine. Was that just a one-day event? Can you imagine? That was a seven-day event. And of course they ran out of wine. And that's when the mother of Jesus, Mary, came to Jesus and said, they ran out of wine. Why do you involve me, dear woman? Didn't call her, mo her mom. Dear woman, why do you involve me in this? And so Jesus, being the perfect son that he was, always listened to his mommy. And he had the servants at the banquet bring the six barrels of water of which he changed the water into wine and he saved the wedding reception that day. Saved the wedding party a great embarrassment to run out of wine. So we gather here today in the Lord's house. Jesus is telling this parable in Jerusalem. It's just days before he'll die on the cross. And his audience is none other than the Pharisees and the chief elders, the leaders of the church, plus many other people. And he said, there's a king who is setting forth a wedding banquet, making preparations. And when it's prepared, he is going to send his servants out with the invitation to come to the banquet hall. The dinner was ready. The oxen had been killed, the cattle had been killed, prepared. He sent his servants to go out and to invite those who had been invited to come to the banquet, but they refused to come. 
Did that stop the king from sending out another invitation? No, he said, then go out and tell them again that everything is prepared, everything is ready. And how did they respond to it? Some went to their field to work. Some went to their business to work. Some mistreated the postmen, who were the deliverers of the invitation, the servants. They mistreated, and even some were killed. And it talks about the prophets of the Old Testament and the invitation that they gave to God's people to be faithful and remain faithful. It's a message of the apostles that would be sent out after Jesus died, and many of them died a martyr's death because of the God. And Jeff was holding up the Bible today. The invitation to the gospel. Where did the invitation begin for you and I? It began at the fount of holy baptism. When we are brought into God's family. When he clothed us with a robe of righteousness that he has won for us. Again, Jesus is pointing to the banquet hall. And the Pharisees and the church elders didn't want to hear any more from this man named Jesus. For they were going to nail him to a cross in a few days. As we gather here, the third invitation now went out to all of those who were out in the streets. Can you imagine that? No one's coming to the wedding banquet, so what does he do? He sends his servants out into the streets, and he invites the good and the bad to come and fill the banquet hall. And so they all come. And as they come, they put on a wedding garment so that they all look the same. However, there was one man who was not wearing a wedding garment. And when the king came into the banquet hall, he saw that it was filled, and people were sitting at the table. However, he went over to the man who was not wearing the wedding garment, and he said, man, how did you get in here without wearing a wedding garment? The man was speechless. And what did the king do? He responded this way. Take that man and throw him out of the door. And then how does Jesus answer or end his parable? He said, many are invited, but what? Few are chosen. Okay, folks, this is the reality of it. There are people who are going to hell. And there are people who are going to experience everlasting life. I remember being at the grave of my father. And I said in my mind, Dad, I will see you again. But it's not going to be in this place. It's going to be in heaven. And you and I are going to be sitting there together at the banquet hall. And all of our loved ones are going to be gathered here before us. Went to two funerals to this week. One for David Gratz who was online because of the COVID-19 and watching that service and listening to Pastor Fast share the life of, of David and what David enjoyed in life. But David in his lifetime honored God's son who happened to be a carpenter. His name was Jesus. And the hope, the hope and the comfort that we had in receiving that message that day, David, we will see you again in the banquet hall in heaven. Went to Tina Crumweedy's mom's funeral yesterday, a beautiful service at the Catholic Church at Lakefield. And again, Father John shared with us the assurance and the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ, who lived and died for us, and Father John was talking about our soul. And then our bodies are left in the tomb, but our soul goes on living. The question was asked to me, well, how long before that soul goes to heaven? That soul goes to heaven immediately as we breathe our last, and our heart stops. At that moment, we are resting in the peace and the presence of God our Heavenly Father. The peace that Jesus won for us. The peace that you and I are going to receive this morning in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. That is the peace that has come to us through Christ's suffering and death on the cross for us. And in the gospel, we have the invitation now to come to the banquet. 
when you think about your loved ones who are no longer with us, in your mind and in your heart, where do you picture them to be? I picture them to be in the banquet. What am I waiting for in this life? The Lord has put out the invitation to me over and over again. It's important for me to continually respond to that invitation and to come to him. That when my moment comes, when my heart stops and I breathe no longer, I enter in through the narrow door of Jesus Christ into the banquet hall. And I take my place that he earned for me, that he purchased for me. See, we come into the banquet hall wearing the same garment. We are clothed in the righteousness of Christ, not in our hands, only what he has done for us. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we respond to the invitation and we answer the call. Come to the banquet. Amen. Peace of God which transcends all human understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join now in singing our offertory hymn. I invite you to please rise for prayer. Invited by your word and encouraged by your promise of mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the blessing of marriage and the faithfulness of husbands and wives, for the children entrusted to their care, for the loving care of children who have suffered abuse or neglect, and for those who open their homes to children in foster care, Lord, in your mercy. For a welcoming spirit here in our congregation, for boldness in our invitation to those without a church home, and for a willingness to serve our neighbor in need and the stranger who lives and cross our paths. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for compassion toward the sick and those who suffer, for our care of those who need our assistance, for the hospitalized and for those recovering, especially this day do we remember Burl Williamson, who has been hospitalized with health complications this weekend. We lift up Viral in our prayers. We commend him into the Lord's care as we commend him into the care of the doctors and nurses in the hospital. We pray this day for our brothers and sisters coping with cancer. We pray for them every week and how important it is for us to come before our Lord, remembering our brothers and sisters and what they are going through in life. We pray for Diane Besky and Shirley Skogabel. Serena Johnson, Marlene Kuntz, Tom Westcott, Bob Blazik, Nathan Bainey, Andrea Mileham, Cindy Chrisinger, Lori Korselman, Julie Krogman, Donna Naraki, 
Paul Overgaard, Elsie Swanson, Shelley Callahan, Gary Madey, Jenny Anderson, Georgia Holtz, Larry Norm, Lacey McNichol, Roger Spiegler, Cindy Johnson, Glory Mashoff, Robert Ziemer, Kay Groth, Perry Cavan, and Harv Baird. Those brothers and sisters of ours who remain on our care list and those that we name in our hearts this day, we commend them into the loving care of a loving Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. For all elected and appointed civil servants, for all judges and magistrates, for all emergency personnel, for all members of the armed forces, and for all of us as citizens and neighbors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray this day for our brothers and sisters grieving the passing of loved ones. Remember the family and friends of Gladys Schultz called to return her west last Sunday, and whose funeral was yesterday at St. Joseph Catholic Church in Lakefield. Remember the family and friends of David Gratz called to his eternal rest a week ago Saturday and whose funeral was here this past week at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Fairmont. We also remember the family and friends of Ben Smith. Uh, ben Benjamin is the, the father of David Smith and he was called to his eternal rest on October 8th and his funeral was on Monday, October 12th at the Christian Church in Fairmont. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that you have shared with us in the gospel the banquet, the wedding banquet that awaits us all in heaven. Lord, we thank you for these very special people and the lives of their family and special in your eye as well. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have for them in sending Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died for their sins and gave them the promise of everlasting life through the waters of holy baptism through the invitation that they answered throughout their life to follow you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that peace that the world cannot give and cannot understand. It's the eternal peace and rest that you give to your dearest children. Lord, in your mercy. For gratitude in receiving the Lord's gifts and blessings, for generosity in sharing these resources with those who are in need, for our offerings to support the work of the kingdom in this place, Lord, in your mercy, for the grace that we hear and heed the invitation of our Lord and joyfully wear the banquet clothing of his righteousness, Lord, in your mercy. All these things, Lord, we pray you to grant us according to your mercy in Jesus Christ and to fill us with contentment, that trusting in your gracious will for all things, our hearts may enjoy perfect rest and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now prepare our hearts for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. With these words of salutation, I greet you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly really good, right, and solitary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company in heaven, we laud and magnify your glory. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you have created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. 
with repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together today, we pray, for the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This blood is the blood of the New Testament, which has been shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise as we give thanks. us pray. Now this true body and blood of our Lord strengthen and preserve you always in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart now in his peace. Amen. We give thanks to you almighty God that you have refreshed us this day through the solitary gift and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and a fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A special welcome goes out to those who are watching on their computers at home or on the website or uh, wire feed. Is it wire fed now, Sherry? Live stream. One of these days I'm going to learn the technology here. <laughs> We're live streamed. So, special welcome to those folks who are watching uh, in their homes. God bless you. Let's receive now the benediction of our Lord. The, bless you and, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.